Welcome back, folks. Another exclusive interview right here on WrestleRant Radio. I am your host, Graham Houston Matthews, on the phone with former WWE superstar Romeo Roselli. How's it going today, Romeo? I'm doing fantastic. How are you? Doing good, doing good. And I've been a fan of yours for the last five or so years now, going back to my very first show, Northeast Wrestling Show, my first ever independent show about five or so years ago. I remember seeing you in a match, I believe, against Matt Taven. I talked to you about this when I saw you in person only a few short months ago, and it's amazing to see how far you've come since that time, especially having been starred in your own movie, your new movie, Jersey Shore Massacre, out on DVD right now if you want to go check it out at your local retail store. We'll get to that in a little bit. But, of course, my first and foremost question would have to be to you, um, kind of a cliche question, but nevertheless, how did you kind of get your start in professional wrestling? Well, it's interesting that you mentioned Northeast Wrestling because – I've actually been wrestling for Northeast Wrestling on and off for my entire wrestling career. I had my first ever pro wrestling match with uh, Northeast Wrestling uh, back in 2000. Um, so now we're, I'm going on uh, pretty much 14 years, believe it or not, in, uh, in wrestling. And when I got into college, um, I went to Sacred Heart University in Fairfield, Connecticut. Uh, I found a wrestling school up in Chicopee, Massachusetts, which from Fairfield to Chicopee was about an hour and a half or so. So I um, I attended uh, wrestling school in, in the evenings, uh, a couple of nights a week and on the weekends. And then I was going to college, you know, as a, as a full-time student, uh, obviously during the day. Uh, as, as things started to pick up, I started working independent shows, uh, that's why I'm kind of a New York guy because I'm from New York, but I was kind of raised, so to speak, in the New England pro wrestling uh, area and circuits, and uh, you know that's that's where I would you know get my start. That's where I would get my training, and you know Kevin Landry was up there at the time, and he was a great uh, great instructor for me. Uh, he was very uh, knowledgeable as as a trainer. And just as a, you know, as a friend, just to know that what you were getting into in the crazy pro wrestling business. So I was just really going to college uh, at the time and then started pro wrestling school uh, when, I, when I was in college and then just kind of started taking off from there. So as of 2014, how many years have you been wrestling for? So I would say it's been about 14, 15 years now. Wow, wow. So in starting to watch wrestling so many years ago, was there any one wrestler that kind of inspired you to start becoming a professional wrestler? Yeah, you know, I grew up in the 80s uh, and, you know, and then as, as a teenager in the 90s. So, of course, in the 80s, I mean, how can you not be a kid in, like, elementary school and not love Hulk Hogan in the 80s? Um, and then, you know, that was Ultimate Warrior, Jake the Snake, you know, all those guys. Um, but I was a big, you know, Hulkamaniac in the eighties. And then as the nineties, I, I grew older, uh, the nineties saw, you know, Bret Hart and Shawn Michaels, which were pretty, uh, big, big influencers on my wanting to actually be a wrestler. Um, and that was mainly because of, you know, their size be like, wow, these guys are really successful wrestlers. Uh, and they're not you know, six, ten, and 400 pounds. So it, it, those two guys really kind of prove that, you know, you don't have to be a, a giant to, to be a great, uh, a great wrestling star. Well, dating back to when I first saw you wrestle five or so years ago, and it's still prevalent to this day whenever I see you compete in Northeast Wrestling or wherever else, is that what made you stand out from all the other guys was that you were such a great heel. So I want to kind of pick your mind on this a little bit. Was there any one guy back in the 80s or when you were watching wrestling that you kind of modeled your character after, or is it only an extent of your own personality? You know, you watch as much tape and as much video as you can. And, you know, once I moved to OVW in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, you know, Jim Cornette was you know, just an amazing mentor and just, you know, just watching, you know, old, uh, Jim Cornette promos and movies and you know, not movies, obviously, but, you know, promos and, and events, you know, and I'm not saying I modeled myself after Jim Cornette, but, you know, it, when you first start OVW2, you get this, uh, you know, you get this training, uh, video package 
which they want you to watch. And it's just hours and hours of matches and promos. And, you know, it, not just not that I just studied those and nothing else, but, you know, just the more you watch as many different people as you can. So, you know, there's, there's the tough heel and then there's the, you know, the chicken heel, you know? So, you know, you kind of just watch how all of them, you know, pro portray themselves and, you know, with your own twist and personality, you kind of make it your own. And, you know, with, with the hard work that I put into my body and physique and my look, you know, it's, uh, it kind of just morphed itself into that. So with that being said, and this might be kind of an easy question for you, but, and also having worked babyface every once in a while as well, is it more fun to play the heel or do you kind of have some enjoyment in being a babyface at times as well? Uh, you, know, you know, my, my family wishes I was a, I was a baby face because <laughs> they obviously want to, want to chin. They always say, oh, yo, you're going to be a bad guy again today, you know, mm -hmm. um, when they come watch. But, you know, it's fun. It's fun to get cheered. <laughs> but it's also, you know, obviously, you know, if you've seen me as a heel and anyone who's seen me as a heel, you could tell that I'm having quite a bit of fun when I'm, when I'm doing that. So, you know, that's, that's something that's very, you know, you know, to be redundant, you know, fun for me to do, uh, to be, you know, just to be a heel and, you know, just to get a reaction out of people. And, you know, my job is not only to get people to hate me, but just as much getting people to like my opponent. So that's, that's what I also have in the back of my mind when I'm, you know, putting together a match and, you know, going out in front of the crowd. The whole, who sucks now? You do. That whole shtick really got, I really got a kick out of that whenever you used to do that during your matches. I thought that was awesome. But um, that being said, though, you've also spent some time in tag team wrestling as well with uh, good friend in reality, Antonio the Promise Thomas, who, who we've had here on the show before. We've talked a little in depth about this with him, but I want to kind of pick your brain about it as well. Um, how did that really, how did that friendship come about? Did that really pursue? And when you guys were in OVW together or when you guys made it to the main roster before that, um, how did your friendship with Antonio kind of develop? Well, uh, like I previously mentioned, you know, the first wrestling school I found was in Chicopee, Massachusetts. And I was just going there for, you know, I, I want to say one or two years. And then all of a sudden in walks this guy, uh, you know, Antonio Thomas walking in. And I'm like, wow, this guy, this guy's in good shape, young. And then we kind of just, you know, casually, you know, started, you know, talking from there and training together uh, in the ring. And, you know, I, I, I don't know who it was, but uh, I don't know if he, if he even remembers this, but, you know, I think one day one of us just said, or, or somebody told us, be like, hey, you guys make a pretty good tag team. You guys kind of look the same and you guys similar, you know, build and blah, blah, blah. So we started to team up a little bit on the independent circuit. And then at, at that point in, in my uh, in my career, I decided to move to OVW in Louisville. I did not get signed to a contract. I just wanted to move down there and start training in the OVW facility because that's where the WWE uh, minor league camp was at the time. And it, it turned out uh, after, a couple months after I moved down there, Antonio got signed. And then he was sent to OVW. And then here we were back together again in OVW. And then from there, uh, after a few months of both of us being down there, we talked to Jim Cornette and be like, hey, Jim, you know, what do you think about us as a tag team? And if anybody knows tag team wrestling, it's Jim Cornette. And if anybody would help us being a, a, a good tag team, it'd be Jim Cornette. Uh, he liked it. Um, uh, he liked the idea of, of, of putting the two of us together. Uh, the whole Heartbreakers creation was his. Uh, so it's not that we, 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 me and Antonio sat, sat down one day and said, Hey, why, why don't we come out with uh, feather boas and, and hearts <laughs> on our butt and dance and dance around that. That's nothing that really came to our minds mm -hmm. at the, uh, at the time, but that was something Jim Cornette said, you guys are going to come out. You guys are going to have big feather boas. You're going to have a, 
lips on the front of your tights, a broken heart on your butt, and people are going to love it. It's going to be great. <laughs> and we're like, oh, you're Jim Cornette. Okay, you know, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll 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 give it a shot. We'll we'll uh, we'll put our heart into it, so to speak, uh, and we'll uh, we'll make the best of it. And then from there, uh, within a month, we were supposed to be heels in OVW, and within a month, we were you know getting cheered as baby faces. So kind of backtracking a little bit too, when you first got that news that you were signed to a deal with World Wrestling Entertainment, was it kind of one of those things where you were so-called marking out within the inside of you saying like, I'm finally got my dream job with the WWE or would you just kind of play it cool as you kind of expected it to happen over time? Well, you know, I, I want to say maybe a little bit of both, but you know, you, you work so hard, you know, to get to that point where it's, it's okay to mark out. It's okay to, to, to get offered, you know, if, if someone got offered a major league baseball contract or, or, or NFL contract, I think they'd be marking out, you know, a little bit too. So I had, I had no problem, you know, being a little emotional when I got offered, offered my contract. And, you know, just like anybody else, and I'm not saying my road was tougher than others because there's been plenty of guys that have had much tougher road than me. But, you know, I had several major orthopedic surgeries before then you know i moved my life to kentucky without a contract i was waiting tables at the time you know i worked on the independent scene you know i did the 10-hour drives for no money to work in front of 50 people you know i you know i'd like to think that i you know i paid my dues up to that point and you know to get that contract offered was was yeah it was uh i don't know a, a highlight of, of, of my life. And you kind of mentioned this a little bit before too, but when you were first given that heartthrobs gimmick by the one and only Jim Cornette, a legend in the wrestling business, like you just said before, did you, was your first thought like, this isn't going to work, it's not going to get over, I don't know if I really want to go with this? Or like you said before, was it one of those kind of things where you were given to it and you were thinking, I'm going to put my 100% of this, I'm going to make it work, regardless of how may not far it may go in the WWE? What was your mindset when you were given that gimmick by Jim Cornette himself? You know, the fact that Jim Cornette gave it to us and that Jim Cornette was behind it and believed in it, we're like, we're going to we're gonna just go after it and we're going to make it work because, you know, it wouldn't have worked if we were just had one foot in. And it wouldn't have worked if we were, you know, apprehensive about it. So we just said, you know what, let's just... Let's just jump, jump with both feet in, and then before you know it, be like, "Hey, what if, what if we did this? Oh yeah, that would be pretty funny. What if we did? This? Yeah, that would be. Pre- and then, oh yeah, when we come into the ring, how about we, we have like this orchestrated dance that we did, you know? Mm-hmm. And then before you know it, we're like, "Hey, you know what? This, this, this could catch on, and you know, this is pretty, pretty uh, entertaining to people." Did you have any input in your characters, or was most of it kind of given to you, and you just kind of ran with it? Uh, you know, Jim, uh, Jim Cornette did, uh, did most of, like I said, did most of our mentoring. So he was very influential in what we did, how we acted. Uh, and, you know, we obviously put our own little, little twist and spin on it. But at the, at the time in OVW, we were, uh, we were very much under the umbrella of, of Mr. Cornette. When you were eventually called up to the main roster, did they have any substantial plan for you, or did they just kind of put you on the main roster just because they thought you were main roster ready? Uh, you know, at, at the time, and you know, looking back, you you could make a pretty good argument that you know, who knows if they had any substantial you know plans for us. You know, I, I give a couple examples, and you know, we were very character driven, and what do characters generally get before arriving in, you know, on television is kind of some vignettes, right? I mean, think about like even Fandango, how many, you know, how many weeks of vignettes he had, you know, he's very character driven, obviously. And, you know, the fact that we didn't have any type of, you know, build and we were just kind of thrown, thrown out on, on live TV. And in addition to the fact that, we weren't even doing any house shows at the time. So a lot of guys either on put are put on house shows first, you know, if they wanted us to change something or tweak something or, you know, modify anything that we were doing in OVW, we could have done that. We didn't have a chance to do that. And then that plus, you know, the no vignettes, no, no character, 
you know, no, we didn't get a chance to talk. We didn't get, you know, do anything. It was just, uh, you know, looking back, it was, it was kind of an odd, odd situation how they, how they handled us, especially because we were so hot in OVW at the time. And at that time too, Paul Heyman was in OVW and we were doing promos for him every week. And he so, he said that was, that was the highlight of, of his week watching us, uh, do promos for him. And we get called up to the main roster, and then what happens? We don't. <laughs> we get thrown out on TV, and you know we don't do any promos uh, for, for a while. And then you know we we got we got talking on Sunday Night Heat, um, but really no uh, uh, you know vignettes or anything like that where we really could have you know utilized the the, the characters of of the heartthrobs. I definitely think that's something that they've improved on within the last decade or so in that with the new NXT system, they don't normally – I mean nowadays they kind of do. There are some exceptions that they don't really normally bring up people to the main roster unless they have a direction for them. I mean I know they have, there's guys like Adrian Neville and Sami Zayn, El Generico, whatever you want to call them, that would be main roster ready years ago, but they don't really have any direction. They don't have anything going for them right now on the main roster that there's no reason to bring them up. So I think that's something they've kind of improved on within the last 10 years or so. Like I said before, not everyone's that kind of case, but hopefully they can, uh, ho- with that kind of gimmick and, and with, with that kind of stuff, um, even though you guys definitely were ready for the main roster, they could have easily you know, given you some vignettes or something along those lines. But in the time yeah, and, that you- the, and the interesting thing was that uh, the next three tag teams that followed us mm-hmm. that uh, de- debuted in WWE all had several weeks of vignettes. And that was the Highlanders, Trevor uh, Murdoch and Lance Cade, mm-hmm. and Crime Time. And so those three teams all had weeks and weeks of vignettes. And, we, you know, we just kind of were left scratching our heads a little bit and saying, you know, not that they didn't deserve vignettes because they're all great guys and I respect them all. And, you know, I've, all, I've had a chance to wrestle all of them. Um, but, you know, we were looking like, well, we, we, we could have used a couple of weeks of that that ourselves as, as, you know, especially if they were into giving tag teams and yet, but you know, maybe they, they, they learned from the mistakes they made with us. Who knows? But you know, we, uh, we made the best of, of what we had to work with. Exactly. Exactly. That, that's kind of the, the consistency that they really need to work on the, and the fact that they would give all these other teams vignettes and not you guys. So it's very odd in that sense, especially since you guys were more character driven, like you said before, like a Fondango kind of character where it was more character driven, even though you guys could go in the ring. Whereas teams like, I mean, Crime Time was more of a gimmick too, but like the Highlanders and even Trevor Murdoch and Lance Cade. Definitely could have not needed those vignettes as much as you guys probably could have. But um, that being said, though, were there any teams in that current landscape of WWE in the time that you guys were with the company that you would have liked to work with that you never really had the chance to? Um, I'm trying to trying to think back. You know, I can't believe it was like nine years ago already that uh, that that was uh, that was transpiring. Um, you know, we worked with Eminem down in OVW and we had some really nice chemistry with them we were on Raw they were on Smackdown mm-hmm. and it, it was unfortunate that the four of us never got to do you know a WWE televised match um, because we probably could have made some made some nice nice magic in the ring and I can't speak highly enough about you know Joey Mercury and, and, and John Morrison and you know how just nice, genuine people they are, how helpful they were, uh, how willing they were to, you know, to do, you know, anything in the ring to help the match get over, to help, to help their opponents get over, to help, and then that in turn will help themselves get over. Um, so, you know, I, I want to say off the top of my head, it would have been nice to, uh, to work with Eminem. Yeah, Eminem was a great tag team. Like you just said, I mean, they were definitely, you guys were separated from Eminem with the whole brand split at that time. That could have been a great feud, and it's just amazing to see how, how far tag team wrestling has come. In the last 10 years alone, I mean, tag team wrestling was so prevalent 20, 30 years ago, but even if you go back 10 years ago, tag team wrestling was a major part of Raw SmackDown. But I'll ask you that next, actually. What are your thoughts on the current state of tag team wrestling? What do you think they could do to improve that, not only in the WWE, but in the current landscape of professional wrestling? Well, I think it's 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 definitely you know goes has peaks and valleys and it and it has its you know goes up and down. Um, I think there's 
you know, a lot of great, great teams out there right now. And, you know, it's, you know, I don't, you know, uh, watch the product, you know, uh, on a weekly basis. I try to keep up with it the best I can. Um, but so, you know, whenever I watch like the Usos, you know, that's their, their matches are very entertaining. You know, the Wyatt family, you know, the Goldust and, and, and Cody and Stardust. Um, so there's, there's a lot of great, you know, great tag teams out there right now that are putting on some very, you know, entertaining, you know, matches. And, you know, even the, even when they do a, the makeshift tag teams, like when, you know, when Daniel Bryan and Kane were a tag team, you know, how, how entertaining was that with the, you know, we are the, we are the champions or whatever they were saying. Um, so I, I think there, there's really been, uh, a possibly a refocus in the last 10 years or so on the state of tag team wrestling. And I, and I think it's going to continue to thrive. Uh, you know, Jim Cornette, uh, you know, always used to tell us too, you know, if you think about it, a tag team match should be almost, if you think about it, more entertaining than a singles match because there's more bodies. And when there's more bodies, then there's more motion. Then there's, then there's never any, you know, if two guys are down, then you have two more guys that are doing something. So really, when you look at it, a, a nice, you know, well-rounded tag team match should should almost be uh, you know more uh, more entertaining than than a, than a singles match. I'm not saying that's the case you know all the time, but you know just to look at it like that really be it really makes you think. Well, yeah, I, I guess I guess that could be uh, could be true. And and I can't mention uh, I can't forget to mention uh, the young bucks right now who are just tearing it up on the on the independent scene. And we had a chance to work with them uh, for in Chikara, uh, I want to say about a year and a half ago, and uh, to team up with them, which was a great experience. And just to watch them, you know, doing their stuff now. And I, I did the Northeast Wrestling Show with them uh, when they when they first wrestled the Hardy Boys. I watched the whole match. I thought it was fantastic. And they're young, they're athletic, and you know, the the, the wrestling world is their their oyster. Absolutely. I think there's just so many great tag teams in wrestling today with, like you just said, the Wyatt family, the Usos, even the Young Bucks on the independent scene. But I think what they really need to try to focus on is giving these guys more direction, more storylines, more focus in whatever company they happen to be a part of. Um, even the Young Bucks are a perfect example, as you just said. They were a part of TNA a couple years ago, and while they had a couple great matches with the likes of... Uh, uh, the Motor City Machine Guns had a great series of matches, and that was like five or six years ago from what I recall. They were just never really given the chance to fulfill their full potential in that company. Now they're just repping it up on, on every independent show that they're on, Northeast Wrestling, Chikara, like you just said before. So, so much great talent out there. They just need to give it more focus like they did 10, 20, 30 years ago. But like I was going to ask you before. Yeah, and, and, you know, and, if, and if WWE is a three-hour show and TNA is a two-hour show, I mean that's a lot of time to mm-hmm. to give some guys you know to give some guys some some TV time and I understand that you know you got to keep the the top guys on you know TV and push push the top storylines but the I mean if you think about it three hours is a long time and you know <laughs> hopefully you know in that three hours you know opportunities are given to as many you know pieces of talent uh, possible. That's exactly it. With a three-hour show, there is no exception as to what, there is no excuse as to why you can't feature more tag team matches or give those tag team matches a little bit more time. The same thing could be said for women's wrestling or even the mid card for that for that uh, matter. But um, I absolutely agree, and they they should definitely do more with that in both WWE and TNA and Independence. I mean, they're doing well as well. But WWE is a prime example because, like you just said, with a three-hour show and all the other shows have got going on SmackDown and everything else. There's really no excuse not to put more focus and emphasis on that tag team division. But with that being said, after your time with WWE came to a close, what was your mindset? What were you looking to accomplish? Because after getting that dream job, you've hit the pinnacle. Where else, or what else were you looking to accomplish in the world of wrestling? Uh, you know, I, I focused my sights on you know uh, working internationally. And I almost immediately got booked in Carlos Colon's uh, Puerto Rico promotion, which was a great experience. I spent, you know, a couple months down there working, uh, uh, working in Puerto Rico. And then I eventually made my way over to Europe 
and worked for uh, New Wrestling Evolution and a couple of their uh, couple of the great uh, promotions out in the you know in the area. And to, to make it even sweeter, I got to wrestle in, in Italy, which was obviously you know where my family family lineage uh, is. And I still have some family out there. And the family that was out there actually came to see me wrestle. And, you know, otherwise they would have never even, you know, seen a show. Um, so the fact that I got to wrestle overseas uh, in, in Europe was, was very special to me. So taking your time as a tag team competitor versus the time as you as a singles competitor, where do you feel more at home? Where, what do you feel, what do you enjoy more, I guess I should say, as a singles competitor or being in a tag team with Antonio or whoever for that matter? Uh, I, I should, you know, when I, when I think about that question, it's very easy to give a pretty general answer and say, oh, it, you know, it depends. Um, but, it, you know, it really does because, you know, there's been plenty of really fun matches I've had with Antonio as, as a team, and there's been plenty of memorable matches I've had as, as a singles competitor. Um, you know, I, I guess it really has been dependent on, you know, the the opponent or opponents, uh, the, uh, the, you know, healer face, and, you know, all, all the little things that go into the, go into the match. So really, you know, I'm I'm fortunate enough that I feel like I could be a heel or a face. I could, you know, uh, be a, you know, uh, 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 the first card on the show or I could also main event the show. And I feel like I'm very versatile in that way. Um, so to me, you know, singles or, or tag team, I'm, I'm really, really good with either. The only thing is, with, you know, with the tag team matches, you know, there's, there's, two, uh, you know, three other guys or, you know, if you and your partner, there's two other guys that you have to work with as opposed to one other guy. So things things can get a little more, you know, intricate or, you know, potentially complicated when it's, you know, uh, more more bodies in the ring. Through Northeast Wrestling and various other promotions, you've had the opportunity to work with the likes of Mr. Kennedy, Booker T, and so many others that I've seen you in anyway on um, the last number of years alone. But So with that being said, who have been some of your favorite opponents, both in singles competition and tag team wrestling? Um, you know, like, like you said, I've had the opportunity to, you know, outside of my time with WWE and wrestling all, all those superstars, you know, I've been in the ring with now, you know, on the independents, guys like Nick Foley and Rowdy Rowdy Piper and, like you said, Booker T and, and Ken Anderson, Mr. Kennedy. Um, you know, I, I had some really fun matches uh, with Abyss. Uh, and even as when he was Abyss and when he was Joseph Park. Um, and he's another great, you know, underutilized talent. I mean, it's hard to say he's underutilized when I know he's featured on on TNA, but, you know, I don't think people realize how, how great of a wrestler, you know, he really is. Um, and I, you know, I really enjoyed working with him and, you know, everybody in Northeast wrestling, I just had a great, great time with, and uh, I'm fortunate to have the relationship I have with Northeast wrestling where, you know, like I, like we said at the beginning of the program, you know, I, I've been wrestling with them for 15 years. And uh, I joked around with the photographer who takes uh, who takes the official uh, photos there, and he's been the only guy there uh, around longer than me outside of the obviously the promoter uh, Mike. Um, but other than that, I've I've been uh, I've been through just about every uh, NEW wrestler, and and I'll, most of those NEW wrestlers were former, current, past. WWE, TNA, WCW stars. Um, so it's been a it's been a really uh, you know fortunate experience. And then being the top heel in Northeast Wrestling, like I said before, that that's the beneficial part about it. And being such a great heel, Northeast Wrestling relies on you to kind of play that heel to that top babyface, whoever they bring in. Like I said before, a Kennedy, a Booker T, the Rowdy Roddy Pipers. And Mick Foley, like you said before, so that's one of the perks of being one of the best heels, not only in that company, but one of the best heels in independent wrestling, from what I've seen anyway. So uh, it definitely has its perks in that sense. But 
Since then, you've also been up to some things outside of the wrestling ring, including your newest project, Jersey Shore Massacre. So tell me a little bit about that and how that kind of came about. Yeah, well, you know, I live in New York, and, you know, once I got released from WWE, um, I'm like, well, I'm in New York. I'm in New York City. You know, I love entertainment. You know, why don't I, you know, start to pursue acting? So I started you know, taking acting classes in the city and, you know, built, started to build a resume and, you know, get in contact with some agents and managers. And I, I got fortunate enough to get cast in some pretty, pretty nice things, especially initially early in my, you know, acting career with, you know, working with Tina Fey and Amy Poehler and, and Baby Mama. And then, you know, a couple of years after that, or actually just about a year or two after that, uh, I worked on a college road trip with Martin Lawrence and Raven Simone. And then the year after that, I got cast in The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, which was, you know, how great was that to combine both my worlds uh, and to be in, a, you know, an Oscar-nominated film uh, about pro wrestling. Um, so I just continued to, you know, work on my craft and, uh, you know, go out on, on uh, auditions and, you know... Uh, Jersey Shore Massacre came about a couple years ago. I auditioned, and obviously, I mean, let's face it, I have a pretty significant uh, Jersey Jersey look if I if I wanted it, uh, if I want to. Um, so I was lucky enough to get to get cast for one of the for the lead roles, and we filmed it a couple years ago, and finally uh, came out earlier this year. So what are you looking to do going forward? Are you looking to get more interested in kind of those opportunities with acting? Are you more focused on wrestling? Where's your mind at right now? Uh, my mind right now is, you know, is something that we kind of haven't talked about yet even was is my fitness career. And, you know, I've been very fortunate to um, make some good uh, waves, so to speak, in, in the fitness industry. And, you know, I work for Equinox uh, Fitness, which is just the, I, I can't speak highly enough about about the company and how much they care about health and wellness and longevity uh, with, you know, with clients and members. And, you know, I've been, I've been a trainer now. Uh, I've been a coach for, you know, about eight years now for, uh, for Equinox. And I continue to, you know, pursue you know, becoming the, the best trainer that I can. And, you know, I, I was just fortunate enough to, to get called over to the Nike World Headquarters to do a couple-day uh, seminar over there. Um, so that's like, the you know, the pinnacle of fitness, the Nike Headquarters in Oregon. Mm -hmm. um, so that's the one I could, uh, you know, check off my bucket list for sure. Um, so it looks like the, you know, the fitness industry is, is really uh, pulling me in in that direction. Um, I still love you know wrestling, and uh, and as long as I continue to stay healthy, knock on wood, then I'm not going to stop wrestling. And uh, you know the acting is something that you know it's it's uh, I'm still very very passionate about. I still go uh, I still go after. I still I'm still auditioning every week. Um, you know, but. At this point in my life, too, you know, I am I am married. I have a great wife, and you know, I, I like to get eight hours of sleep every night. You know, I I, I don't go out and party. Uh, I like to eat right, um, and those are all things that are kind of hard to do if you're a full time wrestler or actor. Um, so I'm not saying that I would never you know consider being full time in either of those professions. But you know, right now I'm I'm having a a nice time being a you know happily married man, uh, and in addition to being a healthy happily married man. That's awesome, man! And with the fitness and the acting and all the wrestling that you're doing at the moment, did you ever foresee yourself growing up taking on so many opportunities, so many avenues with your career? No, I can honestly say uh, I can honestly say I can't, and you know I just. And, and if you you follow me on Twitter, you probably see some of the stuff that I write. Uh, and to me, it's just you know taking opportunities that are in front of me and making making the best of them. And you know, 
the fact that I've gotten so far in wrestling and acting and fitness is just a, is also a testament to my work ethic because whatever I'm going to pursue, then I'm going to pursue with, with my heart and my soul. And, you know, what I've found over the years is, is that that always pays dividends in the end. And, you know, hard work always, always pays off. Um, but the fact that I always like to keep myself busy too. And with three, you know, quote careers, um, you know, I'm always, I'm always busy because if I'm not training a client, then I'm auditioning. And if not, I'm doing the, to either one of those, then I got a wrestling show on the weekend to go to. Um, so it definitely makes life interesting in a very good way. It, it definitely keeps me active and it definitely keeps life fun. Absolutely, I man. That's that's the whole. That's what it all comes down to. As long as you're having fun in whatever you're doing, whether it be wrestling or the acting or the fitness, it all comes back to having fun. It's great to hear that you're having fun in whatever you're doing, and it's only going to keep on opening more doors for you too. Because in wrestling, you got exposed to acting, and from there, the fitness. So that's awesome to see you taking on all these opportunities and all these avenues. Like I said before, so that's awesome, man. So happy for all your success. But before we let you go, would love to hear all your plugs, whatever else you've got going on at the moment, where people can find you on social media. Anything you'd like to plug before we let you go? Uh, really easy. So I just go by my uh, my legal name on everything. So it would just be, you know, my website, GiovanniRoselli.com. And then Twitter's just at GiovanniRoselli. Instagram is GiovanniRoselli. Um, and and all, that, all that information up on my, uh, my website as well. My website's, you know, always up, up to date on, you know, what I have coming up. So... You know, I shot a movie for the Sci-Fi Network um, about, I want to say about a couple of years ago that keeps replaying now, especially Halloween. It's obviously a science fiction, you know, uh, type film. So that will be airing again uh, coming up. And that's all that information is on my website as well. I will be appearing at the next uh, few Northeast Wrestling shows in uh, Monticello and Danbury. And, you know, just you never know where I'm going to pop up on uh, on TV as well. Sounds cool, man. I think I'll be at that Northeast Wrestling Show. I think it's the uh, 14th of November, right? The one with Styles and uh, Kurt Angle at it. Is that, that going to be the one that you're going to be at? Yeah, and uh, I think Booker will be on that show as yep. well. Yeah, yeah, it looks like a great show, man. Hopefully we can uh, catch up with the uh, their do I hopefully we can uh, you know cross path that show as well. But like I said before, man, thanks so much for coming on. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. No problem. Have a good one, man. Take care. You too.